living organisms and their habitats. Lesson Preview Habitat and Environment Biotic Components of an Ecosystem Different Types of Habitats Terrestrial Habitats Aquatic Habitats Characteristics of Living Things Living organisms are found everywhere, from snow-covered cold mountains to extremely hot and dry deserts. They live even on the seabed where it is completely dark. Can you think of a place on the earth where no living things live? The answer is no. You will find them even in the darkest corner of your house. Some organisms even live inside your body. Plants and animals living in different places are different from each other. They adapt themselves to their surroundings. Habitat and Environment Environment of an organism is everything that surrounds and affects it. It includes both living and non-living things. Living things cannot live alone. They all need air to breathe, food to eat, water to drink, and other materials from their surroundings. They need air, water, and soil to survive. Thus, a living organism is dependent on both living and non-living things. Both living and non-living things interact with each other. Abiotic or non-living components are the physical components of the environment. These include air, water, soil, sunlight, temperature, humidity, etc. Biotic or living components include all plants, animals, and microorganisms. These are the biological environment. Ecology is the branch of science which studies the relationship between living things and their environment. All the biotic and abiotic components of the environment make up the natural environment. We humans are also a part of the natural environment. We can change our environment as per our needs. We no longer live in the natural environment, such as a forest or grassland. We live in villages and cities which we have built ourselves. This is the man-made environment in which we live today. Desert region, mountainous region, coastal region. Biotic components of an ecosystem. The biotic or living organisms, which make up the biotic components of an ecosystem, can be divided into three broad categories on the basis of the way they obtain their food. Producers Green plants make their own food from carbon dioxide and water using the energy of sunlight. This process is called photosynthesis. Such organisms that make their own food are called producers or autotrophs. Consumers Organisms which depend directly or indirectly on food prepared by plants are called consumers or heterotrophs. All animals including humans are heterotrophs, consumers. Herbivores, cows, horses, deer, etc. get their food directly from plants. These are called primary consumers. Carnivores, lions, wolves, etc. obtain their food indirectly from plants. They are called secondary consumers. Omnivores, humans, bears, crows, etc. depend on both plants and animals for their food. Water, carbon dioxide, sunlight, oxygen. Decomposers. Microorganisms like bacteria and fungi cannot be seen with the naked eye. They are also consumers that feed on remains of dead animals and plants. These microorganisms break down, decompose, the dead and decaying matter of all consumers into the nutrient substances that they were made of. These decomposed nutrients return to the soil. Thus, bacteria and fungi are called decomposers. In this way, nature recycles nutrients taken from the soil by producers. This keeps soil fertility intact. Different Types of Habitats Habitat can be defined as the natural environment of an organism, in which it is natural for it to live and grow. Organisms depend for their food, water, air, shelter, and other needs on their habitat. It comprises both biotic and abiotic components of the environment. 
habitat varies from animal to animal. The habitat of a camel and cactus plant is a desert, that of a lion is forest, and that of a frog or fish is a lake, river or pond. A good habitat provides an organism with food, water, shelter, and suitable climatic conditions for survival and breeding opportunities. The conditions in a desert are totally different from those in hilly areas. Then how are organisms able to live in such conditions? Organisms have certain features that help them live in surroundings in which they are found. Polar habitat. Aquatic habitat. Desert habitat. The special characteristics that enable a plant or an animal to survive in a particular environment are called adaptation. Different animals adapt to their surroundings in different ways. Most living organisms found in one type of habitat are unable to survive in other habitats. Two main types of habitats found on the earth are Terrestrial habitats Aquatic habitats Terrestrial habitats All plants and animals living on land are called terrestrial organisms. A majority of organisms live on land. Terrestrial habitats are divided into different types depending on the climate, temperature, rainfall, soil, etc. Deserts, grasslands, mountains, and forests are some of the terrestrial habitats. Deserts In deserts, it is extremely hot and dry. There is very little rainfall. Organisms living in this area include camels, rats, snakes, and cacti. Adaptations in plants Most plants have long roots that can go farther down inside the soil in search of water. Some plants have fleshy stems which store water in them, for example cacti. These are called succulent plants. The stem is covered with a thick wax which prevents loss of water. Desert plants lose very little water through transpiration. They have very few leaves or these are present in the form of scales or spines. This prevents loss of water through transpiration. Photosynthesis is carried out by the stems. Activity Take a potted cactus plant and a non-desert plant. Tie a polythene bag to a part in each of the two plants. Leave the plants in the sun for some time. Observe after a few hours. What do you notice? Is there any difference in the amount of water collected in the two polythene bags? What does this show? Adaptations in animals Many animals like snakes and rats stay in burrows, deep in the sand during daytime to avoid the intense heat. They come out only in the night when it is cool. The camel has special features to survive in the desert. It has long legs to keep the body away from the heat of the sand. Its hooves are covered with large soles which help it to move easily on hot sand. The camel stores excess food as fat in its hump. It utilizes this food during shortages, and is able to survive without food for long periods. It can drink a large quantity of water at a time and then stay without water for a long time. It excretes a small amount of urine, and it does not sweat. Its tongue is dry. It thus loses very little water from its body. Grasslands It is very windy and dry in grasslands. It is hot during the day and cold during the night. Adaptations in plants Grass mainly grows here. The adaptations are Strong roots to fix the plants. Flexible stems so that they can sway with the wind and not break. Small leaves to reduce water loss. Some other plants which grow here include acacia, sunflower, clovers, and sagebrush. Adaptations in animals. Lions live in grasslands and forests. They have the following adaptations. Lions are light brown in color which helps them to hide in the dry grasslands. The natural coloring or form of an animal which enables it to blend in with its surroundings is called camouflage. They have strong claws in their front paws that can be withdrawn inside the toes. This helps them to hunt without making a noise. They have eyes in front of their faces which help them to locate their prey easily. 
Deer are also commonly found in grasslands. They have the following adaptations. Deer have strong legs that enable them to run away from the predators. They have long ears to hear the movements of the predators. They have eyes on the sides of the head which enable them to look in all directions for danger. They have strong back teeth for chewing hard plant stems. They stay and move in herds. This also gives them protection against predators. Some other animals found in the grasslands include bisons, gazelles, zebras, and wild horses. These animals also have adaptations similar to those of the deer. Lion Deer Bison Polar and mountainous regions In these regions, it is normally very cold and windy. The polar regions are covered with snow. FIR tree Pine tree Adaptations in plants FIR, pine, oak, maple, devdar, spruce, and cedar are some plants which are abundantly found in the hilly areas. Some adaptations seen in these plants include The trees are cone-shaped having sloping branches. Some of these trees like pine have thick and sharp needle-like leaves which reduce the loss of water. This also helps the rainwater and snow to slide off easily. The plants have shorter stems, so they are not broken down by strong winds. Adaptations in animals A number of animals like the snow leopard, yak, polar bear, mountain goat, sheep, and wolf are found here. Snow leopard Yak Mountain goat Penguin Animals like the snow leopard living in the mountains have thick skin or fur to protect them from cold. Yaks have long hair to keep them warm. Mountain goats have strong hooves which help them to climb rocky slopes of mountains. Some animals go to sleep, slow down metabolic activity to save energy in the body without eating much, in the winter months. This is known as hibernation. Examples are frog, squirrels bats, dormouse, etc. Animals usually have shorter legs, tails, and ears to reduce heat loss. Next time you go to the hills for a vacation, observe the trees and plants there. Tropical Rainforests Adaptations in Plants Tropical rainforests have warm and humid climate with heavy rainfall that occurs almost every day. Thus, with plenty of rain and sunshine, these equatorial regions have very dense vegetation. Tall trees with thick foliage and dense canopies allow little sunlight to reach the lower levels. Ebony Mahogany Trees have leaves with grooves and modified tips called drip tips that allow water to drip easily, so as not to collect on leaves and prevent their rotting. Vegetation of lower levels have broad leaves to trap as much sunlight as possible. Adaptations in Animals Rainforests are home to a very wide variety of animal species. Several of these are adapted to living on trees. Monkeys, for instance, have long arms and tails to swing from one tree to another. Camouflage is another common adaption among rainforest animals, which they use to escape from predators. For example, the stick insect is very difficult to be differentiated from a twig or stick. Predators also use camouflage, i.e. yellow and black coat of the leopard. Toucans and parrots live in holes of tree trunks. They have strong curved beaks which help them crack open tough shells of nuts. Aquatic Habitats Aquatic habitats are further divided into marine, freshwater and coastal habitats. Marine Habitat Marine habitat supports a large number of organisms that are found in the saline seawater. Fish have a streamlined body which allows them to move quickly in water. Fish breathe through gills. Their body is covered with scales and mucus, making it waterproof. The scales protect the fish and also help in easy movement through water. Fish have fins which help them to maintain their balance in water. The tail fin helps them to change direction in the water. Some sea animals like squid and octopus do not have streamlined bodies. 
They stay deeper in the ocean, near the seabed. They wait for the prey and catch it when it moves towards them. Whales and dolphins do not have gills. They breathe through the nostrils or blow holes located on their head. These aquatic animals have to come to the surface from time to time. They can stay in water for a long time without breathing. Fish have air bladders which help them to float in water. Squid Octopus Shark Freshwater habitat Freshwater habitat includes lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, springs, bogs, and wetlands. Examples of animals found in freshwater habitat are snails, worms, turtles, frogs, marsh birds, mollusks, alligators, beavers, otters, snakes, and many types of insects. Fish also live in freshwater habitats. Coastal habitat Coastal habitats are regions where the sea meets land. Different coastal habitats support different types of living organisms. The coastal regions where rivers or streams carrying fresh water meet the salty water of the sea are called estuaries. Some organisms found in these unique habitats are crabs, oysters, fishes, seaweeds, and mangroves. Aquatic plants Plants living in water are called aquatic plants. In aquatic plants, the roots are small in size and their main function is to hold the plant in place. The stems are usually long and hollow. Aquatic plants may be either fully submerged, partially submerged or floating. In fully submerged plants, all parts of the plant are underwater. Leaves are narrow, thin and long so as to resist water currents. They can bend easily in the water. Example, tape grass. In partially submerged plants, Roots are fixed but the leaves and flowers are floating on top of the water. Example, water lily. The leaves are flat and have stomata on the upper surface of the leaves to allow exchange of gases. Floating plants like water lettuce and water cabbage float in water and their roots hang submerged in water. Their leaves are broad and round. Tape grass. Water lily. Water lettuce. Characteristics of living things Food consumption All living things need food to survive. We have already learned how food is important for us. Green plants prepare their own food, through the process of photosynthesis. They are therefore called autotrophs. Animals which depend on others for food are known as heterotrophs. They use the energy obtained from plants for growth as well as for other life processes. Growth. All living things grow in size. You must have noticed that you are also growing taller and bigger. The clothes you were wearing a few years ago must have become smaller. A puppy grows into a dog, a kitten into a cat, a chicken into a hen, etc. Similarly, plants also grow. Small seedlings grow into new plants. Trees grow throughout their life. If you see plants of the same type, for example, rose, you will notice that some are very small and young while some are big and grown up. Respiration When we inhale, the air we take in from the outside passes into our lungs. Oxygen in the air is absorbed and used by the body. Carbon dioxide from the body is given out when we breathe out. This process is known as respiration. Land animals like cows, horses, dogs, and cats breathe like us through lungs. Water animals like fish breathe the oxygen dissolved in water. They breathe through gills. Earthworms breathe through their skin. Plants also breathe by taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. The exchange of gases takes place through tiny holes present on the surface of leaves called stomata. Respiration takes place day and night. Whereas plants take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis during daytime only, and give out oxygen. The amount of oxygen given out during photosynthesis exceeds the amount of oxygen used by plants during respiration. Activity Take lime water in a transparent test tube. Fit a cock with two holes in it. Insert glass tubes in the holes as shown in the diagram. 
Now breathe out into a tube. What do you observe? Lime water in the test tube turns milky, showing the presence of carbon dioxide in the air breathed out. Response to stimuli What happens when you touch a hot iron? You immediately withdraw your hand. All living things respond to a stimulus. The change in our surroundings that produces a response in an organism is called stimulus. The reaction of an organism to a stimulus that brings about a change in its behavior is called a response. The main stimuli to which living organisms respond are touch, heat, light, sound, smell, and taste. Examples A bird flies away when you move towards it. A turtle can contract itself into its shell. Animals become excited when food is served to them. When we feel thirsty, we drink water. Our eyes shut when we move from dim light to bright light. Similarly, plants also respond to stimuli. The leaves of touch may not plant fold when someone touches them. Activity Take a potted plant and place it near a window through which light enters. Continue to water the plant. After a few days, you will see that stem of the plant bends towards the direction from which light is coming. Excretion A number of waste products are produced in our body due to various life processes such as digestion and respiration, the process by which living organisms get rid of the waste and other harmful substances formed in their body is called excretion. Plants also excrete. They excrete oxygen and water vapor from small pores called stomata present in the leaves. Some plants store their waste products in the plant itself in a way that they do not harm the plant. Some waste products of plants are gums and resins. Reproduction Living things are capable of producing more of their own kind. Different animals reproduce in different ways. Some animals give birth to young ones. Some animals like birds, frogs, snakes, and fish produce their young ones from eggs. Plants also reproduce. Most plants reproduce through seeds. Seeds germinate into new plants. Some plants reproduce from other parts like stem, leaf, root, etc. or plant cutting. Non-living things cannot reproduce. Activity Take a cutting from a coleus plant. Fix it in the soil, and water it regularly. After a few days, you will find that the cutting grows into a new plant. Movement Various kinds of motions such as walking, running, jumping, etc. by animals are called locomotion. Do plants also move? No, plants do not move in search of food and shelter, but they show some movements. Roots grow towards the soil and shoots grow away from it. Sunflower turns its face towards the sun. Touch me not plant folds its leaves when touched. You can see similar types of movements in flowers of lotus and water lily. Non-living things like car, scooter, train, and bus also move, but they do so with the help of an outside force, and not on their own. Decay All living organisms have a fixed lifespan. They die after a fixed time. Different organisms have different lifespans. Thus, we have seen that all living things have some common characteristics. They take food, grow, respire, excrete, respond to stimuli, reproduce, move, and die. Do all living things show all these characteristics? A seed can stay as it is without growing or showing other characteristics associated with living things if kept as it is. However, if the same is planted in soil and watered, it germinates into a new plant.